we now we now come to the electrical properties of the solids and even before coming to this chapter we know that solids are basically divided into conductors insulators and maybe we are not familiar with the term but we have been told about some metalloids which are which have the properties intermediate between the metals and the non metals right so if we are talking in terms of the electrical properties basically either the electrical conductivity or the resistivity fine so whatever you call metals otherwise they those are called conductors what we call non metals they become insulators and there are many other compounds of say carbon also which act as insulators so all these pvc polyvinyl chloride and so many things which are good insulators which are used in cables they are compounds so not necessarily elemental insulators and what you called metalloids earlier in terms of their electrical properties we call them semiconductors and you might be wondering why not semi insulators so fine because ultimately from semiconductors they get converted into conductors due to doping <clears throat> that we'll see more details of that we'll see in physics when it is already kind of midway but when you dope it then it basically starts acting as a conductor okay you dope it with a p type or n type in both cases it in one case the hole starts conducting and another the electron starts conducting okay <coughs> so so the the solids the solids i'll i'll divide into solids are basically divided into into conductors conductors okay with their conductivity you know what conductivity is do we know what conductivity is no we don't you know what resistivity is so r we knew is directly proportional to l and is inversely proportional to a that is area of cross section now when when this this proportionality sign goes away it is replaced by a thing called resistivity that we call rho rho is the resistivity rho is resistivity and what is the unit of resistivity the unit see rho is equal to r a upon l is it not so rho is equal to r a upon l hmm so that becomes ohm meter square upon meter is meter so it is ohm meter okay now we define the conductivity sigma as 1 upon rho the reciprocal of the resistivity is conductivity the reciprocal of resistance is conductance okay the reciprocal of reluctance is admittance okay so so they are they are rhymings fine so resistivity means conductivity many times i see children confusing between 1 upon r that is conductance and conductivity they are two different things one is 1 upon r 1 upon r is is conductance it is conductance hmm we will 1 upon r hmm the reciprocal of the resistance is actually conductance okay so so conductors have have their conductivities conductivity 
between 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 7 per ohm per meter okay and for a for a semiconductor this value is for a semiconductor I designated by Sigma because says Sigma is what we call conductivity okay. so Sigma is it varies from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the power 4 so 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power 4 per ohm per meter and in case of insulators in case of insulators okay it goes down to down to 10 to the power minus 20 to 10 to the power minus 10 10 to the power minus 20 to 10 to the power minus 10 per ohm per meter this is the value of conductivity that we are we are finding okay okay Now we'll discuss why this happens in solids. Okay, why this happens in solids? When we are dealing with solids, the same fundamentals that we did while we were dealing with the gaseous atoms, they still hold good with some modifications. Okay, so. So I am dealing with conduction in all these. So what happens? Let me first discuss a, a, a hydrogen atom, gaseous. I think you must be knowing that energy in the nth shell is equal to minus 13.6 upon n square electron volts okay it is so much okay en is that much now what happens at n equal to 1 sorry 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 it is n is equal to 1 here the energy is minus 13.6 electron volts okay now what happens if we put say n is equal to n is equal to 2 then becomes minus 3.4 then if I put it as 3 it is somewhere around minus 1.5 so n is equal to 3 it is minus 1.5 now we have been told we know that these are extremely sharp lines why because there is no atom atom interaction in case of hydrogen this is also rarefied hydrogen gas right so this is this is the this is the energy level diagram the energy level diagram for for a hydrogen atom that is absolutely that is absolutely removed isolated from every other influence hope you understand this and where is my zero so so these lines start becoming closer and closer and closer and till i have somewhere here my n equal to infinity where the energy is zero. 
So for a gaseous atom, <coughs> these are the energy levels. They are called discrete energy levels because they are very sharp lines. Hmm? Now what happens when these when these when these molecules they, they they start coming together these atoms they start coming together nearer and nearer they from the gaseous state first of all all they become liquid and then they become solid so you must understand what will be the nearness compared to compared to when it was in gaseous state now what happens every atom in the solid state has its own energy level diagram and they are not the same why because now they are under influence of so many neighbors in a 3d right in a 3d so 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 that is one thing and the way they are arranged no two atoms are subjected to the same kind of neighbors okay there's some slightly different thing that occurs even even in a crystal lattice maybe a majority will be having but but as you, as you start moving towards the surface deep down into the solid things become slightly different so what happens here and here 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 let me designate here what happened here this was my valence band this was my valence valence shell why in case of hydrogen this is this is energy level diagram for level diagram for hydrogen atom Atom. that too extremely isolated okay isolated now what happens what happens if they start coming together as a solid and there are so many atoms that are present now I am not talking about hydrogen maybe I am talking about something else whose whose gaseous isolated atom will have will have a similar kind of energy levels some differences here right but but it looks the same almost maybe these this energy level is different that energy level is different but but what happens here it is a valence shell yeah, let, uh, let me finish that first this is a valence shell what happens if you give 13.6 electron volt of energy to to an electron it will jump into this zero okay its energy becomes zero and it goes away from the influence of the hydrogen atom i and then i say that the hydrogen is hydrogen is ionized it becomes h plus and that's why it is known as the ionization energy so what will be the ionization energy per atom of an of a hydrogen atom it will be 13.6 electron volt hmm? Plus 13.6. It is at minus 13.6. If you add 13.6, then it will become zero. Fine. So it is plus 13.6. That means you have to input energy to get that ionization done. But normally ionization energy is represented in the units of kilojoule per mole. Kilojoule per mole. So that's why you will not find this value, but this multiplied by Na and this is this is electron volt. One electron volt is how many joules? 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So if I want ionization energy of hydrogen, ionization energy of hydrogen, what should it be? Ionization energy of hydrogen. It is it should be 13.6 per atom into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules because 1 EV electron volt is so many joules and that multiplied by 6.022 into 10 to the power 
23 such atoms ok get the point now if it is hydrogen gas then things will become slightly different ok but for hydrogen if, if you calculate this you should be getting the ie kilojoule per mole that is kilojoule per mole ok now so so this becomes the the conduction shell why i call it conduction shell because because if it is there then it is free to move about because hydrogen is no longer holding it with its own electrostatic force due to the nucleus so that force goes away now what now the same thing the same kind of thing starts happening in a solid now what happens in a solid say in a metal that I have this valence shell and the intermediate ones and I have some conduction shell somewhere here ok some conduction shell somewhere here now what happens since the solid atoms are so close together this is no longer a sharp line rather for some other metal it becomes something like that and for something else it becomes this and this and this and this it, it starts becoming like this similarly here whatever was my conduction conduction band and, and here it is the conduction band is quite close first of all to the valence band why because in metals you require a very small amount of energy to kick it from the valence to the conduction that we that we otherwise also know so so this also starts spreading so maybe what happens is I have these ok and ok and what happens it spreads in such a manner that that I, I, I'll no longer show it like that ok so so this is maybe my conduction so what happens it spreads in such a way that if I maybe call this my valence band and the and say say the red one as my conduction band so so what happens they actually merge together you understand so so they actually this was my this was my conduction band and this was my valence band You see the blue and the red ones and where they cross so the area in which they cross so what happens part of the valence band and the conduction band they actually merge what does it mean it means that the electrons which are in the valence band are also in the conduction band that means they even at the and this is for the normal temperature fine this for your normal room temperature that we are showing so what happens so so at a given time I have my my valence band like that valence band and this is my conduction band this is my 